the glare is terrible. Hi, so today I'm going to talk about my copy of Perdido Street Station by China Mayville. Um, I'll have an update on where I'm at with what I'm reading uh, by the end of the video. So this isn't about the story of Perdido Street Station, but rather it's about my copy, my edition of Perdido Street. I actually had a bit of a hard time finding a copy of this book, which I thought was pretty surprising because I was interested in it because I kept seeing it referenced in so many different places. Uh, so I thought because I kept seeing its name that I would be able to find it fairly easily, um, and I couldn't. <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I don't like to buy books online. If I did, then I probably wouldn't have had any trouble finding this book. But because I limit myself to bookstores, it's a little bit more of a challenge to find some books depending on how popular they are. But I did eventually find it um, at one of my favorite bookstores because they're just amazing. So it just made sense that they would have it. Um, they had this copy and they had another copy with the cover that you see a little bit more often when you google it or on goodreads um, the cover it's a city street with a uh, bird wing underneath it but i got this copy because i liked how it looked more so this copy more closely resembles the macmillan edition that was published in 2001 it has the same cover art um, but there is a difference um, in the spine the spine on the macmillan edition is black and this one well, it looks like it's a continuation of the picture. It's not. It's actually just a sliver from the front copied onto the side. Plus, it doesn't have that Macmillan logo. It has SFBC. SFBC stands for the Science Fiction Book Club. There is a website for the Science Fiction Book Club. When I found it, I wasn't sure if it was the same as the one that the book club that had published this book. Um, because there isn't a history page or an about page on it, but I did find their Facebook page which does list um, that they were founded in 1953, which is the same year that this science fiction book club was founded. So yeah, they're the same place. Anyway, basically the science fiction book club provides science fiction books to their members. I don't think that they print their own books anymore. There wasn't anything on the website to suggest that they do, um, but at one point they were printing their own copies for their members, and that's what this is. I don't know if that was to reduce costs or what, I'm not sure. Anyway, I think I'm presenting this in a fairly organized way, I think, uh, but sorting through the internet and trying to figure all this stuff out took me a lot longer than it probably should have. But I had fun doing so, it was fun. Plus I found some pretty cool things along the way, uh, such as um, the artist, Les Edwards. When I really like the cover art for a book, I try to find out who the artist was. Um, and I found his page, his artist page, that has all like a bunch of his artwork um, for various projects that he works on. And while I was looking at it, I saw that there were other paintings also set in New Crobazon. And I was like, what are these for? And in the descriptions, it said he was commissioned to do these illustrations. Um, for a specific edition, a special edition of Pretty Dostry Station for Subterranean Press. It's not sold on their website anymore, but you can still find the page where they list Pretty Dostry Station on their website, uh, the Subterranean Press website. I'll link that below, even though you can't buy anything from it, but whatever. It was published in 2011. There were 350 limited editions made and 26 letter editions, all signed. When I looked it up, to see if I can find any. I can only find one Perdido Street Station on eBay. When I originally looked it up, I saved a link for the one that I'd found, which was around $500. And when I looked it up again, that link, the book had sold for a little under $500. Um, but there is another one up for currently being listed as over $500. Who knows if it will actually sell for that, but. The other one sold for almost $500, so I think the value is whatever someone will pay for it. There is another one on eBay being sold as a pair with the second book set in this series, which is The Scar, and that's being like sold for over $1,000, which is a ripoff 
because if Perdido Street Station is worth $500, the SCAR is not worth an additional $500 because the Subterranean Press is still selling the SCAR. Uh, you can get the limited edition off their website for $125. So <laughs> you will be paying an extra like $350 if you were to do that um, off of eBay, which is a total ripoff. Just saying. <laughs> not that I'm, sh not that I think anyone is rushing to go do that, but if you were thinking about it, don't do it. For the Perdido Street Station, there were 26 lettered editions that were originally sold for $500, so who knows what those are worth now. Um, seeing stuff like this makes me wonder where they are now, like where those 26 lettered editions are, whose libraries are they in, and like how awesome those libraries must look. <laughs> so yeah, I spent a good chunk of a day falling down this rabbit hole, but it was pretty interesting. I found in the process the Locus Index, which I used to confirm basically that there were two different editions published in 2001, the Macmillan edition and the um, Science Fiction Book Club um, edition. Uh, and I also found the artist um, listed, but it listed him as Edward Miller, which confused me at first, um, but then I realized Edward Miller and Les Edwards are the same person, obviously. By clicking on his name, I saw other books that he had done the cover art for, and that included a book that gave me nightmares as a kid, The Haunting of Elizabeth Cray, which I have. I was kind of confused at first because I didn't think that the artist who did this cover would do this cover. But then I realized he didn't do this cover, that there's another cover, um, much cooler, um, that he did do, and it, it does look a lot more um, like his style of art. So yeah, that was fun. I thought it was interesting. I hope that you also found that interesting, <laughs> and that I'm not the only one. <laughs> As to what I'm currently reading, um, I have started Chapter House Dune, I have it right here. I am 45 pages into it. I'm not that far in, but um, it's because I got distracted, as I usually do, by lots of other things. While I was reading it, there's a piece of information that is revealed on page 44 of my copy um, that kind of like blew my mind, and I took a step back and like had to think about it for for a minute, and I tried talking to someone else about it, and they didn't get it probably because they haven't read the book so they don't understand the significance of this piece of information which is understandable but man it really really got me <laughs> but in the meantime um, I read a couple other graphic novels and then I started The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bythell. I picked this up like a couple days ago and I'm already halfway through it so I'm gonna finish this pretty quickly it's a pretty easy read it's just his everyday notes uh, yeah it's, it's pretty much set up like a diary it's everyday notes on um, his life as a bookseller and the people he encounters along the way um, and it fits one of my New Year's goals of reading a nonfiction book so finally I'm reading something that actually fits in with my New Year's goals because I haven't done that at all yet um, another book that I have started that fits in with my goals is Jessica Kincaid by R.S. Penny. Um, I just got that um, from the author and um, about 10% of the way through it. So far it's, it's pretty good. So we'll see how the rest of it goes. And then lastly, I am listening to The Hod King, which is the third book in the Tower of Babel series. This starts off with Sen Luna Sens. Uh, it's by Josiah Bancroft. Uh, their fourth book is coming out in 2021, supposedly. Uh, so I'm gonna have to wait a while once I finish this one. And so far I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, I only have about two and a half hours left. So we'll see how this book ends. So that's where I'm at with what I have been reading. Um, lots of things on my shelf to be read. My friend started reading Warbreaker, which makes me really want to reread Warbreaker. What I want to know is if you have read this book, Perdido Street Station. 
if you've read it, what you thought about it. I expect some people have mixed feelings. You, I feel like people would either love it or hate it. Um, and I want to know, do you love it or do you hate it? And if you haven't read it, you should look into it because it is definitely different. Well, thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then I will try and do more if I've come across any other interesting copies of books, which I tend to do because I buy a lot. I hope you guys have a nice week and I will see you next weekend. Bye.